Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint both Garkin and Chewbacca from Fantasy Flight's Star Wars Imperial Assault. Although we'll be aiming to give each character a unique tone, the basic techniques required will be the same for each. Here are the main steps. We'll prepare the Wookiees by removing mold lines, filling in any gaps, and spraying with a primer. We'll then give the fur a dark brown base tone, followed by a couple of layers of highlight. We'll follow this with a light coloured dry brush to articulate the texture of the fur. We'll then complete the fur with some dark washes to both strengthen the shadows and further enhance the texture. Finally, we'll paint the remaining elements including the weapons, accessories and facial details. Let's begin. After removing mould lines, you may like to fill in any unwanted gaps with some green stuff, and you can refer to episode 10 if you'd like more detail on how to do this. I've then chosen to prime my Wookiees in black, but white would also be okay. I've also chosen to rebase the figures using wire pins to reinforce the joins, following the steps outlined in episode 10. With the preparation all done, we're ready to begin painting. We're now going to give all of the fur a base colour using Mornfang Brown, which I've chosen for its reddish tone. I found two to three layers were necessary to produce a solid finish. We can now use some Death Claw Brown to provide a broad highlight. We will use this to cover all of the lighter areas of the figure and avoid the areas we want to remain shadowed, such as the areas under the arms. All we're doing here is blocking in the main areas of light and shade, and needn't worry about producing a smooth transition, as the dry brushing and washes to be added later will effectively blur and obscure these layers for us. Chewbacca has some large patches of darker fur, notably on his upper arms, parts of his legs, and on the top and back of his head. These are also areas we can avoid. If you find yourself covering too much of the miniature with this lighter shade, as I've done with Chewbacca's left upper arm, you can always reapply some of the darker tone to correct this. Notice how much lighter the fur is surrounding Chewbacca's face, and how quickly it fades to a much darker brown on the rest of his head. We continue adding the lighter tone in layers until we have a bright, flat finish, and it's important to ensure that we don't allow any of the darker tone to show through on the raised areas. Without the irregular dark patches that characterises Chewbacca, you should aim to cover most of Garkin with this lighter tone. We can now add a lighter area of highlight by adding a roughly equal quantity of something like Screaming Skull. A glance at Garkin's character art tells us we can afford to go pretty light for the upturned parts of the face and body. We can also pick out some of the individual strands of fur with this colour, sometimes using the flat of the brush to do this more easily. A second or third layer should be applied as appropriate, to ensure we have a bright, solid highlight that maximises the contrast. Things will still look pretty rough at this stage, so we may need to make a small leap of faith and trust that the next couple of stages will smooth things out. One of the dangers of painting things like fur is that it's easy to focus solely on articulating the texture and to neglect the broader light and shade of the form. We're only applying this to a few select areas of Chewbacca 
as we want him to have an overall darker tone. We can then provide one final highlight by adding some additional Screaming Skull to our mix. For Chewbacca, I would use this just for the eye area. But we can use it a bit more liberally with Garkin. Once we're happy that we've mapped out the areas of light and shade, we're ready to apply the dry brush. We're now going to apply a light beige dry brush, and I'm using Tyrant Skull. We want this to achieve three things. Firstly, it will allow us to quite easily articulate the furry texture. Secondly, it helps to blend the rough areas of light and dark that we laid down earlier. And finally, it gives an extra boost to the highlights. We should bear in mind that the washes we'll be adding in the next step will darken the figures, so we shouldn't worry if the figures look a little overbright at this stage. We're now ready to apply the washes. We're going to apply an overall wash to each miniature, followed by some more selective shading. As Garkin's fur has a rich reddish tone, I've chosen to use an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Reichland Flesh Shade. Once that's dry, we can add an additional layer for select areas where we want to deepen the tone further. For Chewbacca, I've chosen a darker mix, using two parts Agrax Earthshade with one part Nulm Oil. We're now going to apply some additional, more selective shading to both of our Wookiees. Starting with Chewbacca, we're going to darken the almost black areas of Chewbacca's fur, such as the upper arms, head and parts of the legs. To do that, I'm going to dilute some Nulm Oil with an equal amount of Lamian Medium. This gives me a thinner mix which allows me to more subtly build up the layers. We should add as many layers of this as are necessary to give us the contrast we're after. We should concentrate on the upper arms and the top and rear of the head, as these are markings that really help define Chewbacca, and we want them to look like deliberate design choices rather than simply uneven shading. I would also slightly darken the upper lip area. as well as the toes. 
Here I'm adding a fourth and final layer of shade. Although if you use your non oil neat, you may get the depth of tone you're after in just two or three layers. We can now see how the combination of base tone with highlights, dry brush and wash allows us to create a beautifully wide tonal range and helps bring to life what will be for many of us one of the most memorable characters of our childhood. Although Garkin doesn't have dark patches like Chewbacca, I would still like to further deepen the shadowed areas. And to produce a richer brown tone, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade, again thinned with an equal mix of Lamian medium. I might also add just a touch of Drukei Violet to warm the tone up further, although this could be considered optional. Here I'm darkening the back of the head to make the brighter eye and forehead area more of a focal point. One more final optional touch could be to add a subtle golden tint to the lighter parts of Chewbacca's fur. To do that I'm using a 2 to 1 mix of Lamenta's yellow and Bloodletter, then thinning the mix with an equal quantity of Lamian medium. The effect of this is very subtle however, and is entirely optional. We should now have nice rich fur tones with a good level of contrast and tonal variation, which means we're ready to paint the additional details. We're going to begin with Chewbacca by applying base colours to all of his accessories starting with the ammo strap. For this I'm using Rhinox Hide, although pretty much any dark brown would be fine. I'm then using some lead belcher for the ammo. For the satchel I'm using some Mornfang Brown. and a dark grey mix using black and a Mechanicus standard grey for the crossbow. I'm now going to hit the ammo with some runefang steel, so that it will stand out through the black wash I'll be adding in a moment. And I'm going to give the crossbow a light dry brush with some lead belcher to impart a dark metallic sheen. Just take care not to hit any of the fur whilst doing this. All of these areas, except for the satchel, can now be given a dark wash with some Nuln oil. A second layer may be needed for the crossbow to create a deeper black. <laughs> 
We can now shade the satchel with some Agrax Earthshade mixed with a little Nuln Oil. Finally, we can highlight the satchel with some thinned Mournfang Brown. This could also be used to highlight the raised parts of the leather ammo strap. We'll return to paint the facial details later on. First, let's paint Garkon's weapons and armour. We'll begin by laying down a base coat of lead belcher. We'll follow this with a dark wash using an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. Once this is completely dry, we want to add some highlights which can be done with a dry brush, or a layer, or both. A dry brush with something like Necron Compound is fine for the axe and for the larger parts of the armour. But to avoid accidentally hitting any fur, it's a good idea to highlight the smaller parts of the armour in the usual way, with something like Runefang Steel. We're now going to add a second wash, using another brown-black mix. It might be fair to question why we would use multiple alternate washes and highlights in this way. The reason is that we're actually building up contrast. With this wash for example, we're giving the highlights their first layer of dark wash. But for the recesses, this is the second layer, which means the shadows are receiving a darker treatment than the highlights. Once this is dry, we can add a final highlight with our Runefang Steel. We can then finish the armour off with one last wash, which we can thin with some medium, and apply selectively in order to preserve the brightest highlights. By building up the alternate layers like this, we now have pure bright silver at the brightest points, smoothly blended down to recesses that have now had three layers of dark wash, which means we have a striking level of contrast, as well as a subtly weathered look. You could paint Garkon's satchel any colour you like. I've chosen black to break up the amount of brown on the miniature. So I'm using my standard recipe of Mechanicus Standard Grey and Black base coat, followed by a null oil wash, and some eshing grey highlights. Finally, we can turn our attention to the facial details, beginning with the teeth. I'm going to pick out the teeth with some Ushabti bone, 
turn them down with a little Agrax Earthshade. We're now going to paint the lips, and I've chosen to use some Cadian Flesh Tone to do this. Although the lips now look pretty good, I've chosen to shade them down with a little Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm also going to use this on Garkon's nose area, to give it a more fleshy tone. We can then add a highlight with a reapplication of the Cadian flesh tone, focusing more on the central, most prominent part of the lip. Now for the nose. Garkon's nose appears to be fairly light, so I'm going to leave it as it is. For Chewbacca, I'm using an off-black mix of Mechanicus Standard Grey and Black, which I'm later going to hit with some gloss varnish. Now let's tackle the eyes. I'm going to begin with Garkon by painting the whites of the eyes. I'm following this with a touch of black or dark grey to represent the pupil and iris. I would then add a small amount of null oil to tone the whites down and shade the edges of the eyes. Chewbacca's eyes could simply be left black, as they aren't articulated in the sculpt, and are heavily overshadowed by his furry brow. It is possible, however, to give them the same treatment as we did for Garkon, but they are more tricky to get to. We can now paint the bases, and for the scenic bases that I've chosen to use, we can follow the same steps used in episodes 7 and 10. However, I've decided to introduce a little more variety by giving some of the pipes a corroded copper look. To do this, I'm using a base colour of Warplock Bronze. I'm then following this with a highlight of Hashut Copper. We can then mute the area down with some Null Oil. I've then chosen to add a little grunge to the area with a touch of Typhus Corrosion, concentrating on the areas where the pipes meet the ground. Just as we did with the ATST, this can be built up in a couple of layers to achieve a more textured effect. At this point, I've chosen to add a few additional highlights with some Iron Breaker, which contrasts nicely against the darker, grungier areas. Finally, I'm going to use some Nyalac Oxide to produce a verdigris effect. This is quite a thin, technical paint designed to create the effect of oxidised metal. We simply use it neat and stipple it on in sparing amounts to add corrosive stains wherever we like, 
This is a simple optional touch that is fun to add, but also gives us a way of introducing a little extra colour. With that complete, we can now spray everything with our matte varnish. We then clip the wire pins back and fix the Wookiees to their new bases. And finally we can add some gloss varnish to the crossbow. as well as a small amount to the eyes and the nose. And this completes our Wookiees. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content then do please subscribe, or consider showing your support through Patreon. Join me again soon as we continue painting the hero miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!